Good morning. It's time for Morning Oasis. Welcome in this morning. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to come all the way in. Um, I think that sound is good. So good morning, you guys. Uh, welcome to Morning Oasis. Uh, we let's see. Today is the sixth of June. Um, I am so excited today. The music that we're playing is going to. This is all Kyle's music, Kyle Divine, um, and this is the this is the music that we're using in our meditation series that we're building right now. So you guys can kind of hear what the music is going to be like. Um, and have we have our own music for Morning Oasis now. Isn't that so awesome? I have like so many tracks I get to pick from. <sighs> That's awesome. So we'll be able to do um, our own, you know, just having our own work. I have one card pull scheduled for today. So if you would like a card pull, then just let me know and I'll be happy to pull for you. I have two more slots. Announcements. Again, we've got our music by Kyle Devine today, which I'm so excited about. Um, and two, we've got the fair coming up on the 24th. The fair is just, it's really shaping up to be something truly amazing, honestly. I feel like if we could just add food, some sort of little snack or treat or something, then we would have a full community event, I feel like. I'm just so excited about it. Uh, that's the 24th in McMinnville. If you're unaware of it yet by this point, then go ahead and check it out on our group or on our page. Uh, let's see, then there's Lunch with Jesse. That's going to be at my house. Uh, tickets are more expensive because your know, food and everything is included. Um, I cook all organic uh, from scratch at home cooked meals, so the food is like going to be, it's really good food. Uh, I actually just mastered pad thai at home. So we've been eating pad thai this week and I've been playing around with the recipe and oh, I have it down, like down, it's dialed. Um, so that's not, okay. And then the other thing, you know, we have on Friday, we have a full moon coming up. Now the moon itself is in, it's, it's, it comes into fullness at 6 a.m., 6.09 a.m. for us uh, in the Pacific Northwest or on that Pacific time zone in that part of the country and world. Um, and so I was thinking, I'm thinking about doing, just making Morning Oasis be a full moon special. We can still have some Q&A. But I was thinking of just turning Morning Oasis into a full moon Morning Oasis. Um, so we will be working with that energy directly on Friday, however it looks out, however it plays out. Um, and then I am thinking about, um, I'm just hearing so much about the solstice energy. Not only am I hearing things about the portal opening and various frequency coming through and really what is it to have that the full um, focus of the sun uh, at that apex it's a powerful time and you can look in really any culture and they have some sort of celebration around these equinoxes and solstices there they are impactful on our our way of life um, and the more we tune into it the more conscious we become of it the more we make it a part of our daily life the more we celebrate it and come into sacredness with it that's what actually uh, allows us to receive the full weight the full impact of these energies and frequencies um, so yeah I'm thinking that we'll do some sort of meditation on the solstice and the solstice is by the way on the 20th um, this year it's on Tuesday the 20th and that's it 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 fully drops in at 9 24 p.m so I was thinking on that day Tuesday the 20th what we'll do is a one hour 
um, evening program. I'll still do morning oasis like normal, but we'll do an evening solstice oasis. oasis. And, um, you know, if you guys have things that you want me to focus on or things that you feel like need to be, I should know about as I prepare, you guys are my resource group as much as I am yours. So send me things, PM me things, post things in the group. Let's make this the week of preparation for that solstice energy that we're moving into. Um, uh, and really, we have two weeks, right? Yeah, two weeks. Well, um, a week and a half. So let's just do that um, as well. And I think that's all my announcements that I wanted to put out there. It is. So I will be building an event for the um, for the solstice. I'm not going to for the full moon. <laughs> so just look for that. But as always with those events, when I'm doing a live broadcast, it's always going to be from Jesse Dujari's page, and then it's going to be on the Healing Pathwalker page. Great, Karen. I, I thought you might enjoy that, and I know you have a lot of great resources on this as well. You've, you're quite attuned to these things. Um, hello, Elaine. Nice to see you. So I do still have two card pull slots, but I'm going to go ahead and start pulling. And one of the things I wanted to say was, um, I just want to throw this out there because as our audience is growing, what I love is that we are pretty balanced between our masculine and feminine. I recognize that the masculine are more quiet. They tend to be the ones that watch the recordings or they watch in quiet and with a partner or with a friend. So they're just kind of allowed to sit to the side. But and even that said, actual tuning in numbers are half and half men and women. It's like 40 some odd percent for men, not quite half and half, but 40 some odd percent men. That's a great statistic for us because that shows how balanced we're being. And I, th I want to thank, first of all, I want to thank uh, all the divine masculines for showing up and bringing your frequency and it really helps to balance everything out. Yeah, I'd love to pull for you, Wendy. Um, and, uh, and I also want to thank all of our divine feminines for showing up because by showing up in a more balanced state as a, a really seeking to find your own balance, your own masculine energy, your own feminine energy and balancing yourself, that is being reflected in who's able to come in, right? Who's able to come in and, and sit in this space. Because when a space is far too feminine, it's just not even comfortable for the divine masculine. And then who you are attracting if you're pulling divine masculine in are all the way masculine extremes. And really every man who have I have personally met or has engaged with Morning Oasis has always been these just really balanced, gentle, slightly more masculine than I am, <laughs> obviously, uh, but really balanced men. And it's beautiful. And I love seeing it. So I just want to like, everybody, we are reflecting our tribe where we are making space for everyone. And I just want to thank you guys. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but I even have like 14 and 15 year old young guys watching my show. My son's friends, they watch my show. <laughs> It's weird. My son will come home from school and he'll be like, so you did such and such on your show, mom? And I'm like, how did, how do you know what I did on my show? And he goes, well, so-and-so was talking about it. Um, so we have, I'm, we're, we're reaching like teenagers, teenage boys, and they're awakening and they're powerful and they're focused and they're learning how to like stay the course and embody themselves. It's I just, I'm so excited about that. So I wanted to just put that call out there. Um, we did have a request for balance today, balancing energies. Um, and though the request was for, um, because the grounding energy feels so heavy and thick right now, uh, balancing the up and the down, but this is also part of it. It's all the way around. We're really gonna focus on that balance today. So that all said, our first card pull, and we still have two slots left. Wait, no, Wendy, you requested a, a pull. And Lynn, yes, perfect, there we go, that's everybody. So we've got Wendy and then Lynn. And I would love to hear from anyone who feels comfortable sharing. Well, how was it for you yesterday when you opened your galactic doorway, your galactic portal? Did anybody have any visitors or was it a tuning or 
what was your guys' experiences of that? And let's see. Well, I can pick a deck. It's interesting. Some of my decks have been jumping ship lately. It's, uh, it's interesting. Hmm. Clear, must be clearing things out. <laughs> okay, so um, our first card pulls for Roger. Uh, the deck is Sandra Ann Taylor's Energy Oracle deck. It's a great deck. Really, um, this has just very clear, powerful messages. Uh, so it's, it just, it just cuts through stuff. It really gets to the heart of things, which I would love. Um, and when I feel like I need to talk with the angelics, you know, this is something Hannah Neal and I were talking about because my, um, I was showing her, whoop, well, that's funny. I was showing her how, um, the Oracle deck and the chakra workshop and, or not workshop, but the chakra workbook uh, and the chakra growth chart, how they all are going to kind of eventually fit together as like a system that people can use to really understand where they're at energetically and how at points you'll pull certain cards out of the Oracle deck uh, that I've created and you'll be using them like when you're trying to determine certain aspects. You can look specifically at archetypes or you can look at tools and all of that sort of stuff. So um, we were playing, I was showing her all of that. And she reminded me of how with your, of all of your decks, you can do this. With the energy deck, <clears throat> the energy oracle deck, they have each of the archangels that um, are working with different aspects, right? So each of our chakras or type of expressions, right? Each of our chakras represents a way we express um, how the energy manifests in our lives that we are carrying and holding. So um, if it's root energy, and that's Archangel Michael, uh, color red, root is how we relate uh, from, a, from a base layer of acceptance and safety, right? So um, if you want to talk to your angelics, you can take out the angels from one of your oracle decks, for instance, with me, the energy oracle, they're the chakra cards, um, and they're chakra and angelic related, right? So you can, you can do that with your decks. Um, it's, it's a great way to get more focused, targeted information. Like, let's say, you know, that you're all up in your head and you're trying to see the pattern of being in the head. Use the deck, use your tarot deck, and, and maybe maybe what you want to do is just pull out the swords and look through the swords in the air so you can just stay focused in on that. Um, you know, that said, there is something lost when you're not pulling information from the other suits because maybe that's what's missing, right? But anyway, um, use your intuition, use your guidance, use your compass to determine how you do that. So Roger, we had two cards just pop out of the deck for you. They're getting a lot more poppy. They're like, just, just get to it. And, um, and if there's more than one, it's definitely popping out. So these both popped out and the cards are a man with a holding a coin and caring connections, right? So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to get the book out real quick <laughs> and I will tell you what the read from that is. I'm not going to read the whole thing since there's two, uh, but I will read, <clears throat> um, the basics of each one. So, uh, the first one is caring connections and this is the first one that came out. And, you know, this card is showing the couple together. Uh, like the community card, this reveals a caring connection, but usually between two people only. So this is a really much more intimate relationship. Um, upright, it signals the beginning or deepening of a kindred spirit friendship or even the appearance of a new love. It can also signify a formal business partnership. When this card appears, be on the lookout for new connections presenting themselves. The relationship you already share may become more intimate, purposeful, or present at this time. Notice the opportunities to forge new or deeper bonds. There may be a tender karmic connection at hand. And, uh, you know, obviously you and your partner are in the space of really working through this relationship, uh, finding the way for that to become a more tender relationship, a, a connection of mutual, um, mutual 
reaching, you know, both coming together. So this is just confirming for you. This is really a karmic lesson and pattern. The issues that you're shucking off right now and that are being released because you're seeking this type of connection, that's part of your karmic agreement to do with each other as well, to play out that relationship. And it was definitely true. I'm just, uh, one of the stories that's popping to my mind is with my husband and myself. Um, I got a reading from a woman who does palm re palmistry readings and, and she's just very gifted and intuitive. How she shows up at fairs is palmistry. Um, and she, <laughs> she said, oh, so, you and your husband, you guys have been doing this for a long time. You, you guys have this relationship. You've done it at least three times that I can think of, that I can feel. And I was like, oh, really? And she goes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were his slave. I'm like, oh, my God, I know. He had enslaved my family, and I became one of his slaves. And then he fell in love with me. And then it was this whole, like, not really able to, but uh, I was owned by, so I didn't have any equality in the relationship. Um, and just, it was expected to show up however he wanted me to. It was, I was a possession, truly owned, right? And then, and then I was his mother, and it was like I took back all the power, and I was not a nice mother, <laughs> You know, as a domineering and controlling mother, I had the power, power over at that point. Uh, and then he was my father. And so we've done this swing in and out of power over, power under dynamics from different perspectives, different uh, focal points. And she said, you, it, this is your time actually to break it because this is the, this is the life where you both chose to just come together you know you didn't you weren't forced in via being birthed in with each other as far as parenthood lineage right and you weren't you didn't you weren't forced to be engaged via enslavement right so this was one where you chose you chose to come together and it's that choosing that of coming together that allows us to really release off so much of that karmic debris because then it's a contractual agreement of release. So that's also going on right now. Um, and she told me that when you can start to identify what, and I, when she said that, I was like, you just named the three problem dynamics in our marriage. Like he totally acts like he's my dad, yells at me, you're not my mom. And, uh, and I feel like it's like, <laughs> and she said, well, to break it, you have to just say it. I am not that. This is what I am. And so it's like changing those, just breaking those old pattern agreements and, and speaking the truth of the here and the now, right? Because if time doesn't exist, past lives are actually happening right now. It's like you have a record and the record is always spinning, right? The record is spinning, but where the needle on the record player is focused is the groove that it's listening to. But all the other grooves are still there. They're still playing. They're still making their whirl. It's just not being picked up by that, that needle. So when you have past life influences, it's kind of like you have like three, I had like three needles picking up those three grooves and playing all of it together and how that all manifested was what was creating the dynamic in our current relationship. So by, by saying, no, no, not this needle, not this needle, not this needle, we're going to use this needle. And that's the intention that you're doing when you clear off the other strands of expression that are bleeding through. Um, and the bleed through is important because it allows us by releasing the karmic debris here, we're cleaning it off. We're dusting the record. Right? We're cleaning the whole record, all the grooves. So there's that. And the second card for you was man holding a golden coin, which is a great card for you. Um, do, 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 do. for men, this could indicate an aspect of yourself and a readiness to further your goals and receive increased health, money, or value in your life. Greater success is on its way when you take control of your own finances and act. This card upright could also reveal the assistance of a financial advisor or healer whom you already know or are soon to meet. This man is helpful and may bring sage advice concerning the actions you need to take next. 
Be open to this person, showing up with the support, but always turn to your own intuitive guidance to weigh the information that you receive. This could also signify a new love interest or a wealthy man or a man from work. So what I feel like for, for you, Roger, is that you're really coming into just understanding how you want to focus the intention of your manifestation power and your ability to bring into your life what you want, what you need, where you're at, you know? So that's great. And it feels to me like um, it's a bit like there is some sort of um, a, a partnership. Well, what's popping in my mind is, uh, is Brian, you know, I'm hearing Brian, you know, building, finding other healers, uh, that you can, that you can really connect with and that you're like, Oh, yeah. okay. Now, now you're speaking the language I understand is the most important thing because then they can get into the, they can get in under the belief systems. If we can build trust and connection with those that we seek advice, guidance, understanding, awareness, or receive, receive or give, right? Um, <clears throat> because it's always an interplay. The more we can trust that person, the more we're willing to suspend our disbelief and give them more, a little more room to perhaps bring in ideas in, in uh, perspectives and energetic tunements, frequencies that we wouldn't normally let in because we can feel that, that trust, that two-way communication street. Um, what I have found is that that's, for me, that's the most successful when I find that I'm like, oh, you're speaking my language? Yes. Um, and I think that that is something that that's just pinging for me. So um, just just take a minute and, and perhaps you might want to consider checking in with, with him on in private. Um, I, I'm not sure if he's going to be at the fair. He's got a lot going on in his family life right now, but you can always um, check in with him privately. He's really accessible and building some amazing things. So, okay. Um, the next card pull is for Wendy and I'm going to see you on Friday, Wendy. Excited to give you a big old hug. Ah, we haven't heard from these guys for a little while. Messenger Oracle. This is again by Raven Felon. Love this deck. Love this deck. Honestly, I think, I think every home needs a Messenger Oracle deck, <laughs> or at least one Raven Felon deck. Ooh, mail just got here. It sounded like something a little heavier came through too. Like maybe my new necklace. Wouldn't that be so cool? All right, Wendy. Uh, and this is interesting in, a, in relationship to what we just talked about, well, what was requested for um, our work today. Okay, this card, <laughs> it's called Time to Ground, card number 45. I'm going to just bring it forward. And I think we've had this just recently as well. Um, okay. We're all experiencing moments in our lives when we feel confused, unfocused, and surrounded by chaos and turmoil. And I'm just going to put this out there. I have spent the last week and a half feeling this way, feeling this turmoil. So it's in the air right now. Don't feel bad if you're in it too. <laughs> Uh, these moments are unavoidable. They are lessons. These moments, there are lessons that these moments can impart. But how you respond to them is a choice that only you can make. Take a deep breath and a moment to pause and reconnect with Gaia and nature. Seek the silence of the void within. Whilst your spirit spirals downward to anchor itself like an ancient tree root in the cleansing embrace of the earth beneath you. Now, we've talked about this before. Gaia is actually transitioning and changing. Um, all the planets in our system are, as we enter into this region of our galaxy, as our solar system's orbiting the galaxy, right? So we're always moving. There's a great animation. I posted it quite a while back, I'm sure, of how, what it actually looks like as we, as our solar systems moving through space because we kind of have this 
third grade science fair idea of our of our solar system and how how it looks but it's far more dynamic than that. It's actually, the sun is always moving. The sun is moving around the galaxy and the planets are moving around the sun. So they're actually creating a spiral. And if you look at our, the trail, like what the, the energetic trail through space of our system as it travels, and this is true of all systems, it looks like spiraling helixes and each planet is orbiting at a different rate so some of them have a much wider spiraling loop like Pluto around and some of them have a much smaller shorter really quick you know so this is what's happening also um this this that that structure is repeated over and over and over this helix structure feel you know the 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 uh, vortices and the creating this spiraling energy so as this planet is moving around the galaxy and the galaxy itself is also moving by the way as this is all going on we are entering different regions of space we're moving through space so we're entering into different regions of of galactic climates and right now, the climate that our solar system is entering into is a cyclical entering. It happens every 24,000 years. And it's this part of the, the system where there's really intense gamma rays, which causes big shifts on planetary bodies. All the planets are shifting right now. So while the planets are shifting, we are being impacted. We're feeling it. You know, and anybody who's tuning in is feeling it, right? And it's people who aren't tuning in, they don't understand why they're suddenly feeling frustrated or irritated or getting sick or why their depression is amplifying or their anxiety is amplifying or they don't understand what is happening there. They just know something is happening there. And so for them, all they want to do is figure out how to feel better, right? And so we avoid the things that will actually make us feel better because we're seeking soothing. We seek soothing for the irritation. So we turn to our devices or we turn to maladaptive behaviors when what we really need to do is ground, just ground ourselves back into the earth. So for myself, for the last week and a half, I, truly, it has been an emotional and mental roller coaster as I'm digesting because this, this is showing up for everybody right now, right? There are so many people who are having this new, these new people jump into their lives, new people coming in, changing, discombobulating them on Fit, shifting timelines, shifting perspectives. I mean, if you guys could hear what all of you as individuals are telling me, you would see, and it's all built around how we build our caring connections, how we build our relationship. Good morning, Elizabeth. Yes, ground, 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 Martina. So this is very important because if we do not have a caring connection at this time, if we do not have love and support and compassion as the driving force pulling us together with our intimate relationships, then those relationships will break or someone else will show up who's prepared for that because right now we all need to be balanced which means having a working, functioning, balanced mirror opposite us so we can still see through the external what we're going through. We have to stay centered and we have to stay grounded. Grounded in what is right now, what will be, where we are going, how we are feeling. So we have to stay grounded in that because right now the whale that we're riding through the great cosmos is diving deep is shifting is changing and so we have to stay fixed to her really connected in and the best way to do that is through our root chakra and what activates our root chakra love deep profound supported held love i am loved i am held i am safe I have a home, I have a tribe, I have a clan, 
I am loved, right? And the more you can just drop into that emotional state, that is grounding. That's very grounding energy. So we're going to have things that show up to show us love, to remind us love, connecting with love. Love is how we're dropping down into the planet. That's what we use to root ourselves because this creation, this creation is about seeing the separation, the polarity perspective via a greater vehicle of love, lack of love, abundance of love, uh, uh, weak love, <laughs> strong love, right? love, all perspectives of it. And power over, power under, exactly. Fear is the absence of love, right? Fear is the total lack of love. Um, yesterday, I, I pull cards for myself too. Um, and one of them that I pulled was, um, her name is, I always have to look at it, Amaterasu. She's a Japanese um, goddess. And her whole, her whole, uh, frequency is inner beauty and love. And so for me, you know, I, I, I really hate the vessel being the focus for people. So, you know, when people talk about, you know, my beauty or my look or how I f appear, I'm always like, that's not what's important. It's, it's the inside. This is an assemblage of molecules. This doesn't matter. It's everything else that's inside. But the reality is, is, is we have to love every aspect of ourselves. And the inner beauty is the most important. And if there's true inner beauty, if there's true love of the self in all the ways that the self has to show up, the external can't be anything less than beautiful. And I can't tell you how many times I have done session work with people where when they show up, they're so hidden. Everything is so hidden. Everything is so, the eyes are tight and suspicious. The mouth is hard. Everything is tucked in. And there's nothing really beautiful there because to see because everything is locked in. And it's locked in fear, locked in separation. And by the end of the session, it's like they just open up and you can see their eyes and you can see their face and the smiles and they're full, you feel the joy coming off of them and they're like the most beautiful person I've ever seen. So this is very important to allow what's inside of us to shine and radiate out, especially when we find ourselves in in a state of, in any way, lack, fear, uh, uh, an inability to connect in with our own beauty, an inability to be loved, to show up in that space. So just by falling in love with yourself, and this isn't like a narcissistic, over-focused on the self, I am the greatest, I am the best, a dismissal of others. Uh, it's none of those things. This is really just about genuinely I am loved and I'm loved by me I do have music Elizabeth we now have morning oasis music and it's by Kyle Devine super excited this is the music by the way you guys that's it in it that's in all the meditation series that we're making and we have um, one almost finished and ready to go it's just I got I got really sidetracked in all this energy so Grounding is really important, but also we're being guided to ground in a very different way. If you haven't noticed this and you're trying to ground in the way you've known, the way that's worked for you for a long time, you know, that, that you were trained in, that it's always worked and it's suddenly not feeling like it's working, you're getting distracted, you're having a hard time focusing on your grounding, it's because you need to ground differently. And Gaia can teach you, but we'll also do that today. Um, or at least I'll share with you the way I'm being taught by Gaia to shift my own personal grounding. Um, so this is an important one as well. <clears throat> okay, so, and Wendy, ground, 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 ground. You are totally shifting right now. You and Shauna coming together are opening some great big doorways, and it's beautiful to witness. Um, okay really utilizing this frequency shifting that we're going through. It's beautiful. Keep it up. Good job. Um, Lynn. 
Ooh, it's been a while since I tuned into your frequency. Let's see. Yeah, Earth Magic wants to talk with you. They've been coming a lot, the Earth Magic cards. These again are by Stephen D. Farmer. I kind of personally love it when it's the card pulls are the show. <laughs> it just feels like then it's so in alignment. Okay, so this is really uh, a perfect follow-up card <coughs> for what we've been talking about. I'm going to just look it up real quick so I don't have to once I put it up. I hear the bunny and I think she's somewhere she's not supposed to be. Yeah, see... She's eating the dried flower arrangement on the table. She eats just the stems of the flowers and leaves the dried flowers behind. And she gets in a lot of trouble. She knows that I'm not coming. Oh, yeah. That's my coffee, Martina. I don't mess around. This one is, this is, this is a bigger one. This is my short squat cup. But, yeah, it's my coffee. I have photographic evidence, rabbit, of your naughtiness. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot that I was looking up the... I'm distracted now because I'm like, oh, the bunny is so, so naughty bunny. Okay. <laughs> Which is funny, too, because I'm holding volatility. <laughs> the volcano. Um, Pele is the goddess of Hawaii who lives on the big island, dwelling there in the craters of the active volcano Kiluia. Uh, Kil Kiluia. I'm horrible at reading names. Um, she's considered passionate, volatile, and capricious, and is perhaps the best known of the, of the panoply of the Hawaiian deities. Since 1983, she's been sending ribbons of lava down the mountainside and into the sea, thereby creating new land. <sighs> Me too. <laughs> in this image, we see her subtle visage in the spewing fire of a volcano. So you see, you can just barely see her there. In ancient Hawaiian chants, Pele is described as she who shapes the sacred land. And it's from this magnificent and powerful goddess being and her periodic eruptions that new earth is formed as the resulting lava merges with her sister, the goddess of the sea, Namakahokahi. Namakahokahi. And it'd be great if they did some of those with other things. Oh, that's awesome, Martina. I'd love to go to Hawaii again. The, the volatile and unpredictable nature of volcanic eruptions is widely known, and in spite of science's efforts at forecasting these blow-ups, they sometimes happen without warning. Whether the eruptions are slow and steady or violent and explosive, it's an unstoppable force and one very dramatic way that nature changes and shapes the land. This is a particularly volatile time for you. Unexpected changes, sometimes quite sudden and dramatic, are occurring in ways that you have absolutely no control over. These occurrences may be so powerful as to shake up what you formerly thought of as the foundations of your security. I am so going through this right now. They may even cause you to reassess the direction your life is taking, to question some of your relationships, and to reevaluate the work that you've chosen to do. Although these events may rock your world, know that spirit is the guiding force behind them. It is a matter of finding your trust that life knows what it is doing, and in the midst of these storms of change, it also requires you to make adjustments quickly and to not cling to what was, but instead move forward and welcome with your arms wide open what is yet to come, all from a place of being present in this moment now. You truly have nothing to fear. And so <laughs> this is definitely coming up for me right now, uh, experiencing some big shakeups in my own um, 
connections and belief systems and and it was like a bolt of lightning and it came out of nowhere and it's it's still all just me you know and it's really forcing me to look at things differently to shift and adjust my approach to um, evaluate where I'm at and how I'm showing up and what I'm doing and um, and there's a whole lot of like what does that mean you know my need to be in control of what's coming my need to feel like I understand it you can't tell the lava where to flow the land grows where it's supposed to and so you have to allow the flow to come through and you have to allow the flow to also burn up what's not working and allow it to do so, allow the blow-ups to occur because they're necessary to create that shifting of the land, to create a new space. Um, so yeah, this is in the air right now. So if you're struggling with this, don't feel like there's something wrong with you. You're right in line, you're right in time. Everything is perfect. It's exactly where you need it to be. So I'm gonna take all of these cards that we just read and I'm gonna put some Ganesh love on them and a little selenite love on them to help them connect and we'll get some clearing and we'll add some a little bit of apophyllite. So we've got ourselves a little space over there to help us support us with came through, um, all of the stuff that we became aware of more consciously. That's and take a moment to see, just notice, look how many others, uh, so many of you, so many more of you don't comment than do. So notice how all these other people who are commenting are also in this space. And so if you are too, recognize you're not alone. And that's one of the reasons that we come together with a tribe is because how else do we see that? How else do we ever feel like we have others who get the crazy we live in? We're all crazy together. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> it's my favorite. Yeah, can you see her? She's so freaking naughty. So naughty. What she doesn't know is I just scheduled her hysterectomy. So surgery is coming. <laughs> Ah, for the 20th, you, you, you weren't here yet. Um, so we are going to be doing a nighttime oasis. Um, 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 a, not midnight oasis, no, but <laughs> it'll be midnight for somebody somewhere. So we're going to meet together at 9 p.m. Uh, the actual solstice is at 9.24, I think it said. Um, I, I have the calendar covered up now. Um, and so I'll make an event of it today. I was just looking at all that and we will do some work on it. And what I suggested, Alex, was that anybody who has um, solstice information they want to share, solstice things they want me to make sure I cover, uh, struggles they're going through, any of that kind of stuff to either post it in the group or PM me with it and we'll just have the best, the best solstice oasis, oasis ever. Um, okay, so uh, the talk that I was going to talk with you guys about is, is basically everything that we covered in those cards. Um, ultimately, right now, we're in this time of a great convergence. What that means is the record player, just naturally, because it's all shifting and everything is shifting and we're moving in this new space, new direction, our culture is shifting in evolution and um, even now when you observe young kids playing with our technology that to some of us is still so new we're just like oh my god this is this is really this is really new like this is a lot there's a lot going on here what is it that's going on here <laughs> you know and kids are like click 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 done um, there's a difference in the way that the brain is evolving. That's one of the reasons that we're seeing so much more ADHD. Ultimately, what we're having happen is the brain stems are transitioning and changing as well. We're having multiple focus, the ability to focus on tons of different things or have a lot more energy to be able to do more and accomplish more in a day because we cram so much into a day. I mean, if you think about it, 
less than 50 years ago, most people didn't have a lot, you know, electric washing machines in their homes. They were taking the day to do laundry. That was a day laundry. And now laundry is like five minutes here, 10 minutes there, and it's interspersed wherever we have time for it. Um, to go to the grocery store used to be a, you know, something you had to commit to do. And it took time in the day to choose your groceries, to find what you needed. And it wasn't all in one stop. There wasn't this one stop shopping. You know, you had to go to the bread maker, then you had to go to the butcher, then you had to go to the produce market. You had to go and make with intention, find the things that you needed. And if you go back even, you know, just depending on where you're at, <laughs> people still are living that way. So all of these shifts and changes in our culture and our society are creating a being that's capable of doing so much more. The problem is with our children, we don't expect much of them. So they're kind of languishing with all of this stuff going on. And then you add into it the diets that most of us can afford. Um, you know, the foods that are affordable for most people right now are foods that are cheaply, so cheaply made that they're not even actually food. I mean, you look into the ingredients list and there's things like concrete and sawdust and um, <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff in the foods that are, um, that, that we find. And there's an idea that you can't live cheap, you can't live organic or healthy without it being cheap and affordable, but that's because it's not in the one-stop shopping places like that. So exactly, plastics, everything is in plastic. A friend of mine just recently decided that she was going to try to live a week with no plastic, not using plastic at all, um, and she didn't last very long because it was really hard to find the things that she wanted, especially her yogurt, right? Like, we don't even think about it, but you can't buy dairy products without it being in some sort of plastic wrap, plastic package, plastic container. Um, and it's very rare, you know, the one place that I knew of that I could buy milk in a glass bottle and bring the bottle back, um, you know, it's, it's really challenging. And so we have all of this stuff going on and all of that makes it even harder for our children and for ourselves to to be in this way, you know, to show up in this way of a full, optimized self and healthy and strong and not struggling. So then we start to beat ourselves up about all of this stuff. So it's this whole, like, just cycle that we get stuck in because we have this drive to accomplish so much. So what I try to teach people, and this is definitely something that um, I try to push through the morning oasis is the more you can come just present into the just right here and right now into this moment and what it is that you're doing and to live that life with a focus that is, for me, my singular focus. I try to buy organics when I can too. Um, and I'll get to that in a second. But when, we, when, I, when I shift into the single focus of, I want to be wholly, exactly, who I'm supposed to be showing up in this moment right now. And I try and keep that my focus all the time. I want to be grounded right now. I want to be balanced right now. And I'll tell you what happens. What happens is I find my way by chance in the neighborhood of, for instance, Grocer's Outlet. They now have Grocery Outlet if you have them in your neighborhood or near you in your, in your part of town. They have a huge selection of organic foods that are coming through. I never know exactly what they'll be, but it's like, oh yeah, that's right, I should stop there. And I got organic um, olive oil for cheaper than I buy cheap vegetable oil. You know, I mean, like, it was crazy cheap. Well, okay, not that cheap, but <laughs> it was like $5 for a big bottle of organic um really green, beautiful olive oil that was just delicious tasting. So we can find these resources, but we have to look for them. And so when we step into this like presence where I'm present, I'm showing up. For me, showing up was a friend called and said, can you stop by? I just need you to stop by for a minute and check on some things. I just need to see you. And as I'm going, I pass the grocer's outlet. Oh, 
forgot there was a grocer's outlet there. So I go and I see the friend and then I stop and I, and I go back to buy there and pick some things up. And I'm like, okay, well, I didn't find this and that. So, you know, you can find resources where you can get these things because they're becoming more readily available. They're becoming, the market is getting more and more of them. Safeway now has their own line of organic, their own, um, it's a generic organic line, right? So it's just a little bit less. Finding different ways, being resourceful, giving yourself that time. But most of us are so engaged in things that don't really matter, like our Facebook lives or, and I love Facebook, obviously. I work, I work on Facebook. I meet my clients on Facebook. It's great. I think it's a beautiful resource. But I know a lot of people that don't pull away from it, you know, to go and do what they need to do. Or they're sucked into, um, you know, a job or that they hate doing uh, when their whole passion could be something else. So this process of shifting your life into living present and living in your fullness of who you are, it's not going to happen overnight. And it's not going to be one big leap off of a jump uh, of, off of your old life into your new life. I mean, it could be. For some people it is. For me, it was like this, this process, shifting this. Okay, so next I'm going to shift my foods. Okay, produce. That's right. There's, or, there's farmer's markets. Okay, I need to go to the farmer's market and check in with the farmer's market. You know, doing this constant checking in, checking, finding other pieces, finding other ways. And then when you show up at that farmer's market, you might just meet the next person who's going to open something up for you that you never even would have expected. So we, we can't know, we can't know how much we're going to be impacted by being, following the breadcrumbs, getting out into our world, getting out into the life, into the community, and spreading our energy out there, um, and taking that time to do, be committed to all of these different aspects of showing up for the self. So I don't talk a lot about like nutrition. I'm not a nutritionist. I have a lot of information, but I'm, I'm not a nutritionist. I talk about living, right? How do we live and how do we walk through the world? So we're going to go ahead and use this last just 10 minutes and we're going to do a meditation. But I had to say all that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope that helped. And when, oh, by the way, when you find yourself not able to make that choice or not able to find that food or not able to afford that product or, you know, not able to take the time necessary because you do have to work in order to pay the bills and support the family. That's not the end of things either. That is also part of showing up and it's perfect because maybe you're supposed to eat a little bit less food. Maybe in this time you're supposed to connect into that um, factory farm meat so that you can still remember that there are animals that are here devoted, committed, coming into the system as factory animals and we can connect and send love back to that factory and to that farm and feel that connection and recognize they're just as beautiful and precious and deserve to be loved, right? We can send love and intention in that way. It doesn't make it a better place, but it can help with the whole allowance and acceptance and know these animals are sacrificing themselves so we all can see the ugliness of this, okay? So just recognize that it doesn't... <laughs> I know people who are gifted and powerful and awakened and so aware and they eat the worst fucking foods, okay? The worst. I go to their house and I'm like, oh my God, let me cook for you, please. I'll just bring, I'll just bring some food. And so it, it's all a state of mind, how you approach it. How are you viewing the, that? The volatility, remember, it's all a state of mind that how you view your food, how you connect to your food, how you connect to your resources, how you connect to your family, how you connect to your environment. There is no such thing as a bad anything. It's how are you, how, how is it feeding your belief system, your patterns, your thought processes, and how can it be different? In this moment, allow for a different way, one other perspective. That's where the mirrors come in, okay? All right. So we'll just use this last, I'll go 10 minutes for meditation because this, I think it's a good one. So let's go ahead and just take this time coming into the self, go ahead and breathing in. 
And exhaling. Breathing in. And exhaling. I think we'll use the same ball meditation, blue ball grounding meditation that we used. Go ahead and breathe in, feeling all those little balls of blue oxygenated light coming into the body, opening and filling the lungs, and those little balls of light being absorbed into the vessel, moving through the circulatory system, all the veins and the arteries. See how as it's flowing through the arteries into the capillaries, those balls of light are so bright, so full of energy, being delivered to each and every cell in the body, these bright blue balls of light. And as you exhale, see how the veins are sweeping up those balls that have now become black, absorbed all that the body's ready to release, that's been used, that's served, and it's ready to go and serve a different vessel. See how those black balls of light <laughs> are coming in through the veins back into the heart and releasing in the lungs as you exhale. Breathing in the blue balls of light. And exhaling the black. And now as you breathe in the blue balls this time, I want you to imagine a tree, your tree, whatever it is, whatever kind, in front of you. And it's exhaling those blue balls of light as you breathe them in. And you're releasing those black balls as you exhale the tree is breathing them in. And then it's just space. We're going to feel that almost infinite balance of the energy flowing, transmuting, flowing, transmuting, right? There is no bad energy. What one releases, the other needs in the symbiotic relationship. And as we feel the rhythm of our breath flowing into this infinite state of balance, of synergy, Feel how your roots already are growing deeper. Good. And invite Gaia to come into your body. Don't reach. Invite her the frequency of Gaia to come into your vessel, drawn up by the roots as you breathe in and out. Feel that oneness that you also have with her as this infinite energy flow and exchange between you and Gaia grows more strong, more flow. 
releasing the heaviness, releasing all the minerals that you've collected back into the soil through your roots as you're drawing up that Gaia energy in the same cyclical, synergistic pattern with your breath. We're going to call in the light of source, that shining bright sun that warms the whole planet and call that light in and invite source to shine not just on us but into us, through us as we release back into source all it is to be human in an infinite release and receiving. And just keep flowing. the breath with the tree, the heaviness with the earth, that gravity and the lightness, the source. Well, let's call in the divine masculine and the Divine Feminine to come into the vessel. Resonating that optimum masculine and feminine energy in an infinite spiraling exchange of balancing frequencies. Drawing in the interplay, the lover frequency that brings them together so beautifully. And see how now the heart is radiating out this orchestra of all these frequencies, all these melodies playing separately but are coming together to create the harmony that is you. and stay in this state radiating this frequency out for as long as you want I love you and I will see you all tomorrow bye